Hey guys, today I want to introduce another FLGS right here from my hometown of Hilo, Hawaii. This is Marsha from Game Escape. Okay, so Marsha, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. You are actually the owner of the game store in my hometown here in Hilo. Yes, Hawaii. and I, I'm, I'm very happy to say that, you know, you're part of our community. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate everything that you do. I know you actually got started not with a store, but running a D and D game for kids. Correct. I actually started with a tabletop gaming club at my um, school. I teach at. Uh huh. Math teacher at. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but how did you end up starting the the store? That's kind of a long story. Um, when I had the gaming club. There was a game store in Hilo, and they used to, you know, do stuff with us, and then they ended up closing. And before they closed, I had talked to the owners about doing something with them, maybe making a smaller version of their store or something out of Pahoa. And then while they were getting ready to close, I found, found a place in Pahoa, and I just ended up working out with it. I was able to open a store there, and then the lava flow happened, and then we moved to Hilo. It's all in the time, it's about three and a half, over three years. Fourth year now, yeah, that we've been around. What about the gaming community that we have here? How how vibrant would you say it is? I mean, we have we have a lot of regulars that come in. Yeah, um, our D and D and RPG community is um, really strong for the size of the community that we have. Um, and like most communities like that, super supportive. Um, like you would be an amazing example of that. You know, you want to pay it forward. To the youth, we have many, many players that want to do that and you know share their love of gaming to the future generations, that, you know, and introduce them to the things that we love. Yeah, and it's kind of a unique community in that way, in that you do have so many people willing to put themselves out there and give back, yeah. especially sure. for for new players. Oh yeah, you know, and and that's why the thing I will say that generally players in our type of community are super generous with sharing their knowledge and you know teaching other players and spending the time to to share what they know yeah how exactly would you say that the store a store like like game escape specifically serves the D, &D community what, what kind of events do you have for D, &D special well, groups yeah um well Things are kind of different because of COVID. We used to run AL, of course, every week. And then we also have private groups and other, you know, and not just Dungeons & Dragons, but different types of RPG groups that play. We have a Pathfinder group. Um, I used to DM a Final Fantasy RPG group. So there's different um, RPG groups that play in the store. But the biggest one, of course, is the D&D AL community. We had, I want to say, seven groups that came into play and and of course we support that with the play space um the products for it the books the dice you know all the accessories and miscellany that, that go along with playing the game yeah. and you know and, and it's also a great way for a player that has recently moved into a community or is getting into D &D <laughs> to meet other players to be able to join it and you know if you don't know anyone that plays. Um, it's a great way to come into a store and then meet people to get to play with. Yeah, that's actually that's one cool. of the biggest things we do. Yeah, that's how I got back into D and D. Actually, it was at that that shop here in Hilo, where I just showed up one day and they had Adventures League going and sat down as a player. And a few weeks later, I'm running a table for middle school kids. I mean, that's how easy it is to, you know, become part of a community. And I will say that the D&D D &D slash RPG community is very much social. So they're very welcoming to new players. Um, so that makes it really, really nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, are there any specific programs that you run other than the Wednesday night AL? I know... That's been in, a this, in the store specifically, we used to run a youth um, D and D day on Saturdays, um, but we haven't done it recently. Like, there's a lot of stuff that we haven't been doing. COVID, um, 
Yeah. Well, we used to run um, a Saturday uh, D and D group. Um, one of our DMs used to come in on Saturdays, but he hasn't done that in a while. And then um, when we ran our, our our youth day events, we had a whole bunch of kids from all over different schools on the east side of the Big Island. Like I teach at Pampoa, so um, one of the other teachers at my school actually we the school has a small bus, and we actually bus kids from our school. There were kids from KL, there was kids from Kilo, and, and diff all over the place, um, Kilo mm -hmm. and Kilo. But we also have a lot of um, community members that also work in the school system. So, um, Goloka, who's one of our, our uh, players and DMs, he plays different games, but he actually brought a bunch of, I want to say they were third graders, pretty young. Mm -hmm. And super amazing he's a great dm i mean you know how hard it is to keep kids like that engaged for a couple hours and he had those kids completely engaged in what he was doing with them the entire time and kids that age have a short attention span and that's the hardest thing i think when you want to introduce someone that's younger to the game you want to make sure that it's not too much for them and you take into account the fact that you know like adults will gain for four hours it, you know, it, you need you need to to cut that a little shorter, perhaps, or give them breaks in between. Mm -hmm. Just the content. There's a lot of things. And then um, outside of the shop, I actually was working at the school with my SBBH, which is the behavioral health specialist at my school. And this is super super sad. It took us six months to get a group of students. These are kids that are um, like at risk youth things like that and they had to go through this whole vetting process to the behavioral council services at our school mm -hmm. and get approval with the parents and this and that and we, we created a program to to play Dungeons and Dragons there's actually a lot of research that has been done and a lot of information there's actually a school I think I want to say out of Seattle that runs a Dungeons and Dragons type elective at their school that students can actually take um, and eventually I hope to be able to do something like that here, but it's super hard because it's non-conventional and working in the public school system, it's hard to get approval for a credit program like that. But along those lines, I was, I, I was doing it during my prep period and one of the um, IT guys at my school is also a big candy player. So he was helping me with it. And then we were working with the behavioral counselors and we actually had our first session right before spring break this year. We got the kids together, and, and we, what we were trying to do was the D&D campaigns and things we were going to do is give the students options, so choices that you make. And then we had behavioral health specialists there, so you know they could talk about the choices that they made after. So it was a, a very, um, it was designed to help kids see that there was options and choices that they had in a gaming environment but you know things that you do and choices that you make um, even when you're playing a game can reflect on choices and, and things that you might do in real life mm -hmm. and so in that way it gave those kids an opportunity to uh, expand and try things um, like when I was reading about it I did a lot of research before I went to my behavioral health counselor at school and uh, a lot of kids, like the shy one, might play this large barbarian and get to be loud and get to be right out front there. So it gives them, you know, play, people an opportunity to get outside their comfort zone sometimes when you role play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and you get to do stuff that you, you might not necessarily usually get to do. So that's kind of cool about RPGs. Yeah. That's and kind I of like an independent side thing that I'm doing. It's not to do with the store, but it's because of my passion and love for you know what I mean? I want to, I want to, that's my way of paying for it. The store is one way, but, you know, to directly affect the kids that I teach, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And I think I, I've also seen a similar study to that um, where they talk about by role playing, you're teaching, especially at risk kids who might not have the same emotional um, oh, yeah. background sure. that, that you would see in most kids growing up. They learn the skills, things like empathy. Feeling right. somebody else, somebody else's emotions, and it, it's. I've sure. seen studies where that that's pretty well researched. Oh yeah, and 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 RPGs also give people the opportunity to work together. So you collaborate. You have to critical think. A lot of times, you know, they say, "Well, you just can hack and slash your way out of something." However, a lot of times, 
you can think your way out of something. Yeah. There, there are always other options, and you DM, so you know that. Sometimes the most brilliant thing you ever see your players do is the most unexpected thing, and they don't kill anything at all. Yeah. You know, it's them coming up with the best plan, and that's the awesomeness about it. I mean, seeing kids do stuff like that, they will come up with stuff that you never even thought. You know. Yeah. Yep, they come up with the craziest solutions to whatever problem you throw at them. Exactly. You know, you just have to give them the opportunity and the, the um, chance to, to express it and, and get a chance to, to work together like that. Yeah. Uh, how's the feedback from these, from students, teachers, parents? It's been positive. I mean, you know, I mean, all we're trying to do is give kids another opportunity to do something, a different way to express themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't think... Parents generally are ever negative about that. They, they, they want to see their kids get another opportunity to do something. Um, and like when we ran the last um, youth day at our, at our shop, we had every single game pretty much that we host. We had um, three different D&D tables for kids. We had Magic, we had Yu-Gi-Oh, we had Pokemon, we had Battletech, we had Warhammer. So we had you know, all these different games that the kids could sit down and learn how to play. No, and, and Gaslands, and there were so many. And, you know, the d and tables, kids always gravitate to that. It's, mm -hmm. you know, they, every single table was full. And, you know, the kids had a really great time. And, and the feedback, the parents were super excited to bring their kids to that. You know, and, and, and the biggest thing is, I think, as a game store, if you're going to promote that type of play in your store, you have to make sure that your play space caters to that. You know, your parents, if they're going to drop a 12 or 13 year old off at your store, we, we have certain rules about kids under a certain age being accompanied by parents just for their safety mm -hmm. and things. But, you know, it's like the parents leave their kids here that are 13 and older because they, you know, once they come in and they sit down and they, they watch their kids play on our D&D tables or play with our magic players, they feel that the, the, the environment and the community is safe. And that is a big deal, you know? That's what it's about. It's just like you know, sharing our love for what we do. But you do other events related to D&D, &D, like mini painting, things like yeah. that, before before all of the COVID stuff and... Yes. Yeah, COVID has kind of put a damper on a lot of things. I know. So we used to run Chaos RPG once a month, first Saturday of every month. And that was where anybody could DM. You only needed to have two or three hours worth of content and we randomized the dms on the table and the randomized the players on the table and every two to three hours the dm would change the players on the table would change and it was just an opportunity that players took that wanted to get a chance to dm to dm some content they haven't um test another rpg some you know whatever it is that they wanted to do and so we ran that once a month and that was a popular thing we used to get a lot more players of course now we're not even running events in our store because of COVID and then we had miniature painting the first um, Sunday of every month and that was really really popular for a while and we had a lot of kids when we were in Paho it was actually way more popular than you know um, we used to have like you know eight to ten kids sometimes as well and it was great um, I think that since COVID of course we just haven't been running as many things but um, the painting event hasn't been quite as popular lately, but yeah, no, that's that's one of the. And then we also we, we I'm working with our DMs to run other things. I want to do a um, character creation event. So you want to be a better DM event, um, creating better backstories for your characters. And I've talked to my DMs about it, and but it, it's a matter of finding the time to do it. And of course, with COVID, it's just not a thing. And, and we've also, my, our DMs in the store are super, super amazing on our AL nights. They would sometimes work together and they would, you know, because we, we have a bunch of different tables. And they would check with the DMs that are running those nights. And they'd run a separate table. They would pull players off the AL tables and have this whole event planned. Um, we've had AL nights where the DMs coordinated with a third DM that wasn't normally DMing. And... They were running three different tables, and all three campaigns affected each other. So they were fighting a ship on this one, they were fighting some stuff on this one, and then all the effects and things that were happening on the other tables were affecting this third table. So it's pretty cool. You know, um, our community does stuff like that. And the biggest thing is, I think, 
they enjoy doing things like that because it gives them a chance to share different things that they're good at. You know, I mean, like our painting event, the, the people that help teach the other players how to paint are our community members. You know, I can throw paint on a model, but I'm nowhere near an expert. And, the, you know, we've got some really talented painters that paint models in our store. And they share their love and skill to, to, to other people, you know. And I so, hope you even uh, walking into the store, you even like to display some of those. those oh, yeah. Minis. Yeah. They're we have some models. painted minis. It's, yep. it's impressive. Yeah. Especially so, the Warhammer models. Those things are ridiculously amazing. I've been trying my hand at painting minis, and it's <laughs> nowhere close to what they're doing. It uh, takes a while. Some of these guys have been doing it for so long. Do you have a particularly favorite story about D and D? If not at the shop, maybe one of your games that you ran with students before this. My first year having a tabletop gaming club and then doing the store and everything else. Um, my students, they were sophomores at the time, and they wanted to play. And they actually made their own D and D group, and they started playing in the store. You know that that's taking something that they learn and making it their own and doing it themselves. And, and you know, these, these were like my first year. And, and I, as much as I would love to host a DMV club at school, the reality is it's super hard. Mm -hmm. How much DMV can you fit in in an hour? You know, it's most campaigns run three to four, but I'm trying to do what I can with the behavioral services. But in a perfect world, I would have been able to do something after school for like three hours with the students or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to actually implement something like that. Like we run an after school program. I could do something, but I would be limited to one hour. Yeah. And you know, you, you have like 40 plus kids. I can only realistically be on eight. Mm -hmm. So there's so much opportunity. It's just the reality is you can only do so much as one person when you're trying to directly share or, or DM. And, and, and so I think it's that whole give someone a fish versus teaching them how to fish. So I think that's one of the most valuable things. Like that goes back to my students. They learned how to play D and D, and now they DM themselves and run their own campaign. They don't need me to be there, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, th I think that's that's the big deal um, is teaching them how to play, and then giving them the opportunity to do it themselves and make it their own. Yeah. And you know, they they super enjoy that. They actually rather play with themselves in in, in their group. You know, they will play with other people and whatever, but you know, they're super good friends and. They just have a really great time together. And, and so that's one of the, the, the cool moments that I had as a, as a um, I guess, a DM is that I share my love for d, d with my students and they actually do it themselves. And I hopefully, you know, I think once a DD &D player, always a d, d player, even if you don't play for years, you can always sit down and get back to it, yeah. you know, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, so they'll always have that for the rest of their lives. They can move to any city, any community in the world. And find a local game store and drop them to a game session. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, mean, I can I can testify to that. I stopped playing D and D in high school, and it wasn't until uh, I was in my late twenties that I picked it up again. And yeah. now I'm just as addicted now as I was back then. So, <laughs> for our program at Behold, what we're focused on doing as well, which is why I'm going to game shops, educators, and and folks that have a mind to help kids get into these hobbies. Um, we're actually teaching people how to use D&D as an academic enrichment tool. Oh yeah, there's so many studies on that too. It makes them better math players. I mean, math mathematicians improves their reading skills. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, like the soft skills, social, you know, emotional, yeah. things like well, that. I'm yeah. literally taking math problems out of Tristan's homework and putting them into dungeons. Oh, that is awesome. You gotta solve this riddle, and I call it a riddle now. <laughs> <laughs> solve this riddle if you want to get to the next room. Oh, that's cool. cool. So that's sort of what we're going for, and, and I, I think all of those sense. academic, social aspects, emotional learning that they can take away oh, from yeah. just makes it such a good tool, and I for think sure. game stores being a hub, it, it's really a hub for the community to come together. And, and I think that's what's really, really great about it. Yeah, I mean, that's what we're here for. We're here to serve the community. I mean, a game store does not exist without its community. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I do what I do. 
the, you know, my, my love for gaming is one thing, but the reason why I try to keep the store going is because of the community that it serves. I hate to toot our horn, but we have a pretty darn great community. Yeah. No, we really do. <laughs> but I miss getting to see everybody come in on Wednesday. You know, we've had such a big indie community of coming in on Wednesdays, and I miss that. I really yeah. do. Yeah. And hopefully we can get back to that place. So why don't you tell us, uh, before we finish up here, how can people find you, your store, website, social media? Oh, um, our website is helogameshop.com. We are... Um, our store name is Game Escape. It's GAM3 Escape. We are located at 305 Wailuku Drive, Suite 7. Um, we're located behind the Kilo Public Library. So if you take Wainui to Uhulani, and there's a small little side street called Irwin Lane that is probably the best part. But you can go all the way to Wailuku Drive and park there in front of the building. Um, our phone number is 808-498-4095. I do need to talk to you later, probably tomorrow when the store is actually open. I'm going to pre-order Tasha's Cauldron. Hopefully you guys have some of those special covers still available. Yeah, we do. Yeah, <laughs> stop by. Yeah, no, that's the next big one, right? Yep. Oh, man, I can't wait. So, yeah. Marsha, thank you so much for uh, oh, talking thank to you. And, yeah, thanks uh, for taking the time to talk to me about it. And I, you know, like I said, appreciate having you in our community. We're uh, pretty spoiled. <laughs> Well, thank you again, and I will see you or talk to you tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Take care. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you to Marsha for talking to us. Uh, it was very inspiring to hear her work with kids, social and emotional development. Those that are in the greatest need could really benefit from playing a game like Dungeons and Dragons, learning skills like empathy, teamwork, all of those different things. And the fact that she's doing it in our community is so fantastic. Uh, I hope that you guys, as always, have fun and learn lots. Thank you. Mm -hmm.